I showed you in a previous video that making a column not null restricts that value so that you cannot put null in that column. And you might be tempted to say not null on all your columns, but then you're forcing your users to enter in data for everything. And sometimes your users either don't know or they don't care to enter the data. And what's worse is if they don't care and you're, re you're requiring a lot of data, then the users will just start inserting junk and just to get past your nullability constraints. So you got to be careful with these constraints, how tight you want to be. The tighter you are, the more pure your database can be, but it may backfire on you if your users start doing things to get around your constraints. In this video, I want to show you how to create a check constraint, which simply checks the value or values in one row. And they're rather straightforward to do. Here I have a patrons table. Let's say we're setting up a bar. And so let's, let's uh, first of all, we want to identify all of our patrons. We could do that by first name, could do that by last name, could do the combination of first name and last name. But chances are uh, we're going to have more pa patrons with identical first names and last names. So all those aren't going to work. We could have a username. Maybe when people come into the bar, we have to. Uh, they choose a username, and that'd be great, a great identifier, let them choose it. But for this video, I'm just going to say ID. I'm going to wuss out and say int, ID, int, that's the primary key. Uh, let's see, let's give it an incremental value like I showed in the last video. Identity 1, 1. Okay. And then down here, let's store their name, Varchar, you can have up to, let's do first name. It's, it's good to split these things up because then we're not slamming multiple values into one column. First name. Last name, Varchar, 100. Okay, and then um, let's do age, because it's important we know the age of our patrons. We don't want uh, we, we don't want kids coming in here. So age is an int, and that's good. So I'll run this, and it looks like it worked just fine. Select splat from patrons. No data quite yet. So let's insert some data. So insert into patrons values, first name, Willie, last name, Wonka, age, he looks like he's about 50. So run that, we have Willie Wonka, age 50. Okay, well, say Willie Wonka went through some, I don't know, metamorphosis, if, is that the right, correct biology term? I don't know. So went through some changes, and he, and he shrunk, and, and he turned into a 17-year-old. Okay, well, that's fine, 17, and that works dandy, but, but now we have a 17-year-old that's a member of our our bar, and last time I checked, I believe bars you have to have, uh, gotta be, what, 19 or older? I can't remember. Maybe it's 19. So I want to check that the age is uh, greater than or equal to 19. So now I've just restrained, restrained, sorry, restricted this single column age. I'm saying, hey, whenever an insert or an update happens, check that their age is greater than 19. If not, reject it. So watch what happens when I run this. The insert statement conflicted with the check constraint, CK patrons age, big ugly number. The conflict occurred in the database Northwind. Wow, a lot of details here. This is good. Usually error messages are pathetic. Uh, DBO patrons column age. So basically it's saying, hey, you violated this, this, this constraint. Okay, now unfortunately this constraint name is not intuitive. It's like patrons age. Well, I can, know, I, I can go look at what constraints are listed on patrons age. In fact, let's go here. I wonder if we say... Uh, what did I say? Patrons, and then columns, and age, and then I think if we look in constraints, yeah. So here's the constraint right here, and uh, if we double click on it, see it says, okay, age greater than or equal to 19. And here's, we can do all this in the GUI, like I said in a previous video, we could create our tables and set up our constraints in the GUI, and I could go in here and modify it and save it and close it, but, but we're not going to use the GUI, we want to be independent and be able to script. So... This name, CK Patrons Age, kind of gives me an idea of where I need to look, but I'd rather uh, have a more intuitive name. So I'm going to say constraint, and I'm going constraint. Let's get an S in there. I'm going to name this constraint myself. So I'm going to say uh, patron must be of legal age. And that's a little wordy. I'm sorry, but I I'd rather be a little more wordy than a little less wordy. As you know, error messages can get difficult to interpret. So now when I run this, it says the insert statement conflicted with check constraint, patrons must be of legal age. And so that kind of immediately gives me a, an intuition as to what's going on. Oh, he's 17. We can't put him into our database. So let's say he morphed again and he turned 30 years old. So now th this won't violate at all. It inserts and it works just fine. And 
satisfies the check constraint. And I can select splat from patrons and everything is just dandy. Uh, notice though, let's go back to putting 17 here and I'm going to rerun this whole script and get the error again. Notice we have zero rows affected, meaning the insert failed. So when I select splat from patrons, pop, no data. So that's kind of nice. We've constrained, constrained, yeah, constraint, <laughs> sorry, constrained our data uh, to something a little more meaningful than us. Now, notice this, this check constraint happens on this one column. And a check constraint can only and only look at one row at a time. But it's possible to check, uh, check multiple columns against each other. For example, Maybe we wish to track when people start and stop coming to our bar. So at that point, I'm going to get rid of this age just to get it out of worry for now. Um, but let's say they have a start date, which is date time. Uh, and let's say we absolutely, they have to have a start date. In fact, let's say they have to have a first name and they have to have a last name. Uh, and then um, let's do end date. And end date can be null. And if you wish to be a little bit more explicit, you can put null out there, even though that's the default. So now I'm going to insert into patrons Willy Wonka, and his start date will be right now. And then we won't prov provide a value for the end date. So let's see if this works. Column name, number, specify. Okay, I guess we have to be explicit here and put null. Okay, so Willy Wonka, start date is here, end date's good. All right, so what if I did something weird like this, though? Date add, um, I want to take, let's take a year, let's take a negative year off of the current date. So what this is going to do is give me a date a year from, uh, a year ago, not a year in the future, but a year in the past. So I'll run this and notice that the, uh, the start date and the end date, well the end date comes after the start date, which doesn't make any sense. So now I have to have a check constraint that checks two columns, not just one two columns. Right? Now remember if I come up here and I say check and I put some constraint here, I can only check against this this column. So now what I have to do is a table level constraint, which is basically after I've d defined all the columns in the schema of my table, I can come down here and say okay, check that uh, start date is less than end date. So now here's a constraint. Notice I'm comparing values from two columns. And so that's going to prevent people from inserting dates that are that are previous from now. So if I run this, insert date conflicted with check constraint. Uh, there's a big ugly name again. Con conflict occurred, da 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 da. Basically, can't have a, a uh, end date that's prior to the start date. If I say, hey, let's go a year from now, run it. Oh, everything's fine and dandy. That satisfied the check constraint. Again, uh, it'd be better if we had a had a more intuitive error message than just CK patrons. There's a check constraint somewhere on the patrons table. So we can again say constraint and end date uh, comes after start date and run that. And now we get end date comes after start date or must come. How about that? That might be more better. Must come after start date. So insert statement conflicted with check constraint end date must come after start date. So that's a little more intuitive than than the error messages we were receiving before. You can allow SQL Server to name constraints which are just another type of objects just like tables are objects and functions are objects in your database but uh, it's, it's better if you name it explicitly and take control and do something more intuitive. It'll save you some headache in the long run.